Well, here we are on the 18th of May, 2024, and the experiment has gone very, very wrong. Uh, the Irish government, and I call them that loosely, because the government in Ireland currently are not in power. They're in, they're not even in control. They're basically taking orders from their masters in Brussels. And the experiment in which they're all involved in has gone very, very wrong. Nobody asked for Ireland to be flooded with immigrants from any country. You know, we have a history of putting our hand out and helping people over the years who are in need of real genuine help. What we're witnessing now up and down the country of Ireland again and again and again is a government riding roughshod over the wishes of the people who pay their wages and the people who they are there to represent and take instruction from. This instruction is very clear from the Irish people and it is a simple one. It is stop enough this has to end now before this becomes such a huge problem that we won't be able to fix it i hear again and again this this ridiculous hollow cry about international cares international reputations and duty of cares towards others but they ring hollow and they mean nothing if they don't start at home you know, the, 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 the new leader of the latest face on the conflicts box in politics is not a man who you would follow to many places, to be fair. But to watch the, the people in charge of this mess scramble for excuses and try to ridicule genuine concerns. I mean, we're talking about four o'clock in the morning uh, modular homes being moved into villages with no consultation, no planning permission, no, absolutely no acknowledgement that the people of the area have or should have any say whatsoever in anything that goes on in their town, their community. And this in itself is arrogance beyond belief because these, the, you know, the, the latest one in Clonmel, you know, the, the, the people who are trying to stop this are genuinely motivated by a deep, deep love of their country. And they, they, they can see so clearly now what so many people couldn't see for so long, which is there is no other way to describe what's happening in Ireland today other than a replacement. That is what you're seeing. At this rate, now I leave you to do the maths, but at the rate of increase in immigration to Ireland over the years, and forget all the different labels and names that they have for these people, they're guests of the government. The EU took one look at Ireland and thought, nice, nice, nice little rock in the middle of the sea, beautiful countryside, kind, gentle, generous, laid back people. Imagine if you could throw an extra 10 million in there. Sure, they wouldn't be crowded at all. And that is exactly what this plan is about. So, you know, to the people who were called conspiracy theorists and told they were being paranoid that the Irish people were going to be replaced, they are being replaced. This is no longer are going to be, might be, could be. This is what you're seeing. And at this rate, the, the, the downtime until this becomes a reality is getting shorter and shorter every day. And all the while, the people who are in charge of this dangerous, dangerous experiment are telling you, you're seeing things, you're imagining things, you're paranoid. Well, the truth is, I think even the people in D4 can now see that this isn't going to be something that can be stopped, this juggernaut of immigration whether it's the people coming from the UK after years of evading being sent back to wherever they were. They were there for years as illegal immigrants and now because of the Rwanda plan, they're on their way here. And this is, this is, this is so curious to hear people break this down into countries and into colours and into races and religions. You can do that if you want, but the real truth here is numbers. We cannot house our own. We cannot give enough medical care to our own. We cannot give mental health treatments sufficient to deal with the huge mental health problems we have here in Ireland. Did you know that we have been top of the suicide league in Europe for over 10 years now? And that you're more likely to die of suicide in Ireland than a, as a young man than anything else? 
And what does that tell you about the government that don't have a minister for suicide prevention, that don't address this problem and treat it as if it would go away, just like the excess deaths? Don't ignore them and they'll go away. Well, I'll tell you what's not going away is people's frustration and people's anger. And it's rightly justified. And you can paint these people into little boxes all you want because you live in a bubble, but these people live in the real world. They know what it's like to take a dog out at three o'clock in the morning, safe in the knowledge that you are safe to do that man, woman or child, wherever you live in Ireland. And that's the Ireland that we had here. This is now an Ireland which is under threat by the actions of a small group of individuals who call themselves our government and who have gone rogue. There's no other way to explain this. You know, and now we have these elections coming up. Elections? I saw the presidential election from the inside. I ran for candidacy five or six years ago and I saw what a scam it was. And I don't believe that the general election will be any different. These people are so arrogant because they know they're in control, they're in power, they have a coalition. A coalition means we're all on the same boat. None of them argued against the immigration pact that has just been foisted on us. None of them spoke up when it came to lockdowns. None of them spoke up when it came to mandatory vaccines. So if you're going to vote in the next few weeks, and if votes mean anything, then every vote you give an established party, you're voting for people who want more of the same, who want more immigration into Ireland, who want unvetted immigration into Ireland, who don't listen nor care about the concerns of the people who elect them and pay their wages. So every vote you give to an established party, you are giving to a party that is on board with this craziness. And I don't care how nice the man at the door came and you give him a cup of tea and you give him a couple of biscuits and you know his mother from down the road. These people belong to, to, to political parties which are currently involved in the complete and total destruction of this country. Culturally, geographically, in terms of number of people that are here, you know, the reason I mentioned suicide is suicide is a huge problem in Ireland and the mental health resources to help people are just not there. So what's the last thing you should do? add more people. Your housing service broken down on its knees. What's the worst thing you could do? Add more people. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, common sense is the only thread. Like these videos I've been doing, and it's very, very complimentary, have been having millions and millions of views. They've been shared in America, in Boston, and in New York. And why? Not because I'm some genius, but because I'm talking common sense on behalf of the Irish people. And where are the politicians in the doll right now taking your money that are talking common sense on your behalf? Didn't I hear Claire Daly say the other day, what we need is more immigrants. Like, the chaos that is about to ensue as a result of these policies is unimaginable. You only need to travel around Europe to some of the shitholes of Europe that have been destroyed by third world immigration. You know, oh, what, you shouldn't mention the fact that these are third world people? Well, why wouldn't you? In some cases, we don't even know where these people are coming from. There's no security check. Oh, we take their fingerprints. Yeah, sure. What do you check that against? Uh, yeah, exactly. How many of these people do, uh, get deported that come into the country illegally and break the law? Uh, and that's what you're dealing with. A government that refuses to act for the people and on behalf of the people. Sack McEntee, sack Drew Harris, you know, end this crazy immigration policy now. We can opt out now. All it needs is one signature and a pair of balls to say, no, sorry, this isn't sustainable. What we are doing here, and I'm talking about you, the political establishment, and you are all responsible for this. What we are doing right now is signing a death warrant for Ireland and for everything that we once held dear. And everything, by the way, which doesn't belong to us, which we didn't work ourselves into the grave for, our grandparents did. So somebody somewhere in the, in the government building needs to wake the hell up and, don't, and ignore these polls coming out telling you who's going to win this. This is what they do. This is why it's called tell lie vision. It is a lie. Everything they're telling you about the political spectrum, about Trump in America, they're distractions. It's all a distraction. So right now, immigration needs to be halted into Ireland until we come up with a successful plan to deal with the overflow which we're experiencing and which is going to get worse and worse and worse as the days and weeks move on. And to all the people who are standing up around the country to say no, good for you. I have a big no on the window of my van and I think more and more people are saying no and they're saying no, I'm sorry, we didn't vote for this, we didn't ask for this and we don't want it. So back to the drawing board and come up with a way of ending this madness before it's too late.